Hi, and welcome back to Bedecked. I am the author stylist, Rebecca and Brian, but you can call me Beck. It is February now when I'm posting this video, which is also my birthday month. My birthday actually falls on Valentine's Day. So for my birthday month, I wanted to do episodes on some of my favorite things. The first of my favorite things I am featuring is France. I am a bit of a Francophile. Anything um, Parisian or French uh, excites me. If you follow some of my branding efforts, I show a lot of macarons. I was actually fortunate enough to go to France in 2005 with my mom. Thanks, mom. <laughs> And we're planning on going back when my kids are a little older. So I am a fan of French culture, French style, French food, French shopping, stuff like that. So uh, the book I wanted to feature is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. I love this series of books by Stephanie Perkins. It's Anna and the French Kiss, Isla and the Happily Ever After, which is my favorite book in the series, and Lola and the Boy Next Door but I thought Anna and the French Kiss would be great to feature for our French-themed episode. So in the book, Anna and the French Kiss, Anna is an American from Atlanta, and she goes to a boarding school in France for her senior year of high school. She meets a lot of different characters, including the boy who ends up being the love interest of hers in the book, Etienne. What I love about Stephanie Perkins is maybe maybe this is a YA romance thing. I'm not really sure. But what I love about books like this and books like Rainbow Rowell, <laughs> uh, bringing her up again, is um, I guess kind of the imperfect nature of the characters, of the love interests. In this book, Anna is uh, taller than her the boy who ends up being her boyfriend, ATN, and she also has this blonde bleach streak in her hair. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting pairing that you don't see every day. And that's what I love about why romance, and that's what I love about stories like these. A little bit of <laughs> realism and not idealism in my fiction. So instead of recreating outfits from this book today. Um, I am going to kind of take a different angle um, and go into my own closet and try to create French style, a French style in general. I think if you were an author who wrote a book that has to do with French culture, these are some of the outfits you could put on or some ideas you could put on if you wanted to look like an official you know, French person. Like I said, I went to France in 2005 and I was, I had taken, um, at this point, four semesters of French in college and two years of French in high school. So I had a bunch of French knowledge. I did not speak one word of French when I was there, which I still kind of regret. So my next trip, I, I do want to try to do that more. Although I clearly could not speak the language or I could, but I refused to. Um, <laughs> what I really, didn't want was for me to stand out as an American tourist. I wanted to try to blend in. So what <laughs> at the time, they brought this up in, at the beginning of Anne and the French Kiss, so I had to mention it. The idea that French people hate clunky white sneakers. I didn't bring any sneakers. I didn't even bring any comfortable shoes. At the time, ballet flats were, they don't make them like they do now. Ballet flats are hit or miss anyway, they're cute. I like them because they're flat and I'm tall, but especially back then, you could not find cheap ballet flats that were comfortable. So I was walking through the streets of Paris with blisters on my feet for days, but I looked darn good doing it. I don't even think I brought a pair of jeans. Maybe I did. Maybe I brought one nice pair of jeans, but it was cheap. My dress pants, ballet flats, like a simple um, plain colored, like solid colored top and a jacket. So for a 22-year-old soon-to-be college grad, um, I think I pulled it off as well as I could. I also am a huge fan of Emily in Paris right now. I just finished watching the second season. I love the style of Emily's boss, Sylvie. She, I think, really embodies the laid-back, 
classic kind of sex appeal for French women. We're going to see what we can do to be mini versions of Sylvie today. I did Google French style uh, before I started the episode to make sure I was on track. They value classics. They value comfort, simple pieces, neutrals, no active wear, no big clunky sneakers. Just basically don't look like you're going to the gym. Wear clothes that fit. Don't wear clothes that are too tight. So I'm going to see if I have some of that in there and see if I can come up with anything that looks French. I'm just going to pull some pieces that I think will work. One style thing that I've heard again and again and again and again is the classic men's white shirt. To be completely honest, I didn't even know my husband had one of these. <laughs> Otherwise, I probably would have pulled it out many episodes ago and tried it. So we are going to try the classic white shirt with something. Another classic that we have to cover for French culture, American too, but French especially, is the little black dress. I mean, every woman needs a go-to. <laughs> I'm grabbing all the basics today. Go-to little black dress um, and ballet flats. Very Parisian, yes. I am a little horrified that I don't have a better bright and striped shirt right now. Um, this isn't great. I don't love it. Um, I pretty much use this shirt to wear under a sweater and that's the only time I wear it. But I'm going to see if I can pair it with, you know, the right pair of pants and shoes and see if I can French it up a little bit. This might be a little bit of a departure, but I'm going to try something with, it's still a neutral, it's, um, it's a pretty simple pattern. So we're gonna try a mini skirt and um, tights to maybe be slightly fancier French girl. We'll try it. Of course, the dress pants, very similar to the dress pants I could not resist wearing while I was in Paris. So we'll bring back the black dress pants. I definitely wanted to try one look with jeans. So um, we've got houndstooth, which I don't know. It's kind of a classic print. Uh, more basics, a white t-shirt, black jeans, and then a menswear kind of jacket. So we'll see how much of this works. All right, I wanted to start off with something a little more stereotypical. So if you, perhaps you're at an event and you really want to signal, if you're into French culture, come here, <laughs> come to my table. So we have the striped shirt, we have, and you could throw, you could throw a cardigan over this too, um, if you wanted to. Um, I found I had a, a Paris, scarf. So I'll kind of unfold that and show it to you. I would say get a better striped shirt than this, maybe white and black with the thin bright and stripes. But anyway, black dress pants, black boots. So let me just show you this. I forgot I had this, but this is, um, as you can see, a scarf with the Paris, um, is it the Metro map on it? So that's cool. So you know what you could even do too is have this if you had like a scarf like this, set it on the, your table and kind of have it, like use it as a table runner. So that is option one. I wasn't sold on the menswear blazer at first, but um, I think the idea of this feels very French to me. Like throw on kind of an oversized, but really nice high quality classic jacket over basics, also high quality basics, like a white shirt and black jeans. Um, and then I went with loafers, a pop of color, um, which I don't know if that is super French, but 
I mean, it is in a classic print, like a hound's tooth. So I think I can kind of get away with that. Another option besides this, another great option, would be to pair something like this with a trench coat. In fact, I think I am gonna run and get my trench coat because I think it'll really even elevate this look and even more. But can you imagine just like sitting at a cafe, kind of meeting friends in this outfit, you know, in, in the fall or something? I think I can. I'm gonna get a trench coat. Okay, here's the same look with the trench coat. Nice, classic. I can totally see you wearing this, um, I could totally see a Parisian wearing this, running through the streets, hitching a ride on the metro, and going to their day job. Here's a warm weather version of the previous look. I look like I'm ready to hop on a bike with a croissant in my tote bag and go take pictures by the Eiffel Tower. So this is another way you could signal, hey, I'm a Francophile, come talk to me. Okay, I love this look. It feels super um, classic, but also fashionable, but not in a trendy way. Uh, I see this woman going off to work at kind of a stylish job. Maybe she works in fashion. Maybe she works at a high-end department store. But I am totally loving the look of the white men's shirt, and I'm stealing it. It's now mine. And finally, this is kind of my... Uh, Sylvie light look. This is my homage to Sylvie from Emily in Paris. Um, she always wears neutral colored dresses with some interesting detail. Usually it's asymmetry. Mine has a ruffle down here. Super high heels. This would also work with a ballet flat and big chunky bangles. So I could wear this to a party or maybe an office setting and hopefully not stick out like a sore American thumb in Paris. I hope you enjoyed some of the Parisian inspired looks I came up with today. Um, I'm excited because I got a new shirt out of it that I stole from the other side of the closet. Today I introduced you to Stephanie Perkins' trio of leading ladies. Next week I'm going to introduce you to my trio of leading ladies in my romantic comedy books, um, the Rock and Austin series. So I'm going to probably be doing online shopping for Brit, Sharnita, and Jenna. So that'll be a fun one. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Dact. See you next week. Bye.